Hello, everybody. Um, welcome back from spring break. Um, I hope you guys had a great week. I hope you are all still safe, still healthy, still happy. Um, this is our second week of Scratch, so we're going to keep going. Um, we will be continuing to do Scratch, learn a new concept each week, um, with the goal of you guys are building your own really solid games um, at the end of the quarter. Um, so this is just going to pick up where we left off last week. Um, the first slide is review. So Scratch goes ahead and uses sprites, which are individual characters or objects. So you may remember from last week, you had the cat plus the two other sprites. Um, you had new sprites just by clicking this. You're going to get to do that in the lab today. Um, each sprite receives scripts of blocks that the sprites then follow. So as you guys also saw last week, these are the scripts for the cat, right? These are the scripts for the crab, scripts for the dinosaur. Uh, blocks can make sprites do various things, such as move, make sounds, dialogue, and change costumes. Blocks can also make things repeat multiple times or forever. You guys remember this? Here's the move blocks. See, the dinosaur is moving, right? Dinosaur is turning. I can do all of that. Um, you just drag the blocks out, put them here, and the dinosaur will do those things. Remember, this is basically what we had with the program last year, right? last year, I mean last week. Feels like a year. Um, okay, that should be reviewed from last week. Um, again, you can see on this slide, this block moves the sprite 10 steps. These blocks, it'll repeat 10 times. It'll glide during a position. It'll meow. It'll say I'm in a new place. Then it'll switch costume, right? All of those things will happen 10 times. It'll go one, two, three, four, back up at the top. One, two, three, four. So let's um, dig into the idea of events a little more. Um, we had this in JavaScript whenever we made an on-click. Um, the clicking started the JavaScript function, right? We clicked the button, the JavaScript ran. So in programming, events are actions that tell a program what to do next. Um, events can include the user clicking or opening a web page or pressing a certain key or scrolling over a certain part of the page. Um, this happens even in Google Slides, right? When I click here, that's the event that says, let's go to this slide. When I click here, it's the event that says, let's go back to slide two. Um, I put these pictures up here if you want to think of real life things. When you see a red light, you stop, right? When you see the green light, you know to go. The fire alarm tells you, hey, it's time to get out of this building. Um, all sorts of events exist. You guys talked about that in the do now. So how events in Scratch work? So you guys saw this last, piece, last week. Scratch is a category of blocks for events that represent all the actions that can tell the program when to run scripts. These include when the green flag is clicked, when a key is pressed, when a sprite is clicked, when certain criteria like a timer is met, that's this one down here, or when messages are broadcast. So all of those are over here in events. Um, and again, you can pick different keys. You're going to do this today in your project. Um, you can make it so when the backdrop switches, there's a lot of options you have. Um, these are all events. We'll talk about broadcasting another week. Um, that's when something happens and sends a message out. Um, the main three that we're going to focus on this week are these three main events. The green flag is the main one because it typically starts the program. The other two big ones will give you um, a little more flexibility to control individual sprites. So that's when the key, when a key is pressed, when the sprite is clicked. Um, if you look, this is what you are going to be making. So you're going to have more letters than just A and B, but it's an alphabet thing, right? So... When I click the letter, it changes something that starts with that letter. That's when this sprite clicked. What I also did is we also coded it so when the A key is pressed, it runs as well. When the B key is pressed, it changes to building. And then the green flag brings them both back to their normal costume. So that brings us to costumes. So sprites can change costumes, which means change into something else. Costumes can be used to make it look like sprites were moving or become completely different objects. Um, that's what you saw when the A turned into the apple. Costumes can also be painted or uploaded by the user. So when you make your alphabet game, if you want to make A stand for something like astronaut that there isn't a, um, a sprite for, just get a picture of an astronaut on the moon or something, and you'll now have that in your program. Um, all you do is you go to costumes here, and then you add a costume. And then here's all the ones that exist. So for each letter, you're just going to do the first 10 in the alphabet. 
you're just going to find one that starts with it. So maybe like, let's say we're on F, right? So we can do fishbowl. Um, G can be a griffin or a guitar. Um, you just have to do 10 letters. It doesn't even actually need to be the first 10 in the alphabet. It just needs to be 10 letters. Um, what you are going to do is follow the guide in order to submit that. Um, and that's really it. Um, please reach out if there's any questions. I'll be live teaching, which means um, kind of explaining these concepts in a little more detail um, during your class time on Tuesday and Wednesday, Tuesday 8A, Wednesday B day. Uh, other than that, I really hope you guys are doing well. I miss you all. Uh, can't wait until the day we're allowed to be back in a classroom. Uh, it's going to be really fun to be back in school. Uh, thanks so much. Have a great day. Uh, that's all.